upgrades. The word we heard more than any other over the course of the Spanish Grand Prix weekend as teams up and down the grid brought brand new parts to their car to try and improve their 2022 season to find those extra attempts that will take them to that next level. And let's talk about those upgrades. I'm going to go through all 10 teams, the upgrades that they brought and whether or not they've had a real impact on their season so far. But I think we have to address first, why wait until the sixth race of the Grand Prix to bring your upgrades? If you're a Formula One team, surely you want your car to be as quick as possible, as soon as possible. And we see little upgrades over the first five races of this season, but a massive upgrade package for lots and lots of teams in 2022, now that we're back in Spain. There's kind of two reasons for that. First of all, Spain is where we do our testing at the beginning of the season. So it's a really easy comparison to Spain two months ago when we first saw these 2022 cars compared to now and of course the fact that we are in Spain we're back in Europe we've got a big European stint and so many of the teams are based in Europe as well it just means that those parts are easier to get to when it comes to the Spanish Grand Prix but let's delve into the upgrades that the individual teams brought to this Spanish Grand Prix starting with Red Bull as they took the lead in the Constructors Championship over the course of this Spanish weekend congratulations to that Red Bull team they looked phenomenal again this weekend but not too many big changes just a couple of things that Red Bull brought they brought some front wing flap adjustments and also some adjustments to the floor and the way the aerodynamics runs over that floor and actually they've been continually getting better and better over the course of the season Sergio Perez set the fastest lap for them in the Barcelona testing a 119.556 compared to Max Verstappen's 119.073 that saw him qualify in second place behind Charles Leclerc on Saturday so the team is getting progressively quicker you would say but there's still those little niggles here and there isn't there obviously the two dnfs for max verstappen because of the engine and of course his drs issues over the course of the weekend so it's going in the right direction for red bull they're definitely getting quicker but there's still some underlying issues with that car that they need to sort out Whereas Ferrari, you could argue, have probably been the most consistent team in 2022. They didn't really have any issues in pre-season testing at all, and they haven't had too many issues over the course of the season that have been fundamental to the car. It's more been driver error that's lost them a lot of points over the course of the first five races. But they did bring some upgrades this weekend. They changed the floor, similar to Red Bull. They also changed the rear brake winglets a little bit to try and get a little bit more downforce and that high downforce rear wing. But that's a very Barcelona-centric thing that Ferrari have implemented. Looking at the time differences though, it's massive jump forward for Ferrari since testing. I said they had a good testing. Apparently it wasn't as good as their car could be because Charles Leclerc set a 119.689 in Barcelona testing and then when he was qualifying on Saturday set a 118.7. So those upgrades coming in for Ferrari, nearly a second quicker than their fastest time in Barcelona. Obviously there's tyre changes, obviously there's slightly different changes to the track as well, but that is an exceptional jump forward for the Ferrari team. And another team you could argue that's made really big steps forward is Mercedes. They're probably the biggest talking point over the course of this weekend because they just look like a completely different team. The drivers themselves said that the car was so, so much better to drive. And looking at what they changed, they changed the front wing end plates, the floor similar to the two teams in front of them, and the rear brake winglets as well. But they were just able to get on top of that porpoising issue and actually lower the car down to the ride height that it should be. I touched on Mercedes issues of a few races ago now and talked about how their ride height was just so high and it was so unstable for those drivers. Lewis Hamilton looked like a completely different man in the pit lane this weekend and George Russell just kept it going. The consistency of that man is absolutely sensational. Looking at their times from Barcelona testing compared to now, Lewis Hamilton set a 119.138 in Barcelona testing and George Russell, the fastest time that they could do in qualifying was a 119.393. So they're kind of where they were at Barcelona testing, but obviously with a completely different setup to that car. If you look at the Mercedes car in Barcelona, testing it looks like a completely different animal to what we see in front of us today Although saying that, it was McLaren who in particular had a huge overhaul on their hands this weekend. The boys in orange changed pretty much everything that they could on their car this weekend. They changed the front wing flaps, the front suspension, the brake ducts, the floor, the diffuser, the engine cover, the cooling system, the rear wing and the rear brake winglets as well. It was a massive, massive task for the team in orange this weekend and slowly changing the car. Lando Norris had all of those changes put onto his car in free practice one, whereas Daniel Ricciardo's car was so slowly changed over the course of the weekend to try and find the best balance for all of these new parts and actually if we look at the data on it Lando Norris set the fastest time for the McLaren car in Barcelona testing that was a 119.568 
compared to Daniel Ricciardo, who actually set the fastest lap time for the McLaren team this weekend, a 120.297. So actually, they've lost out on seven tenths of a second somewhere over the course of the season. I know that it's not directly comparable, but that McLaren car is looking so 50-50. It looks so track dependent at this moment in time. I know that Lando Norris has picked up a podium, but they're sitting in fourth place, and I actually think they're under a little bit of pressure from Alfa Romeo and Alpine. Lando Norris picking up points this weekend, Yes, slotting in behind Bottas and Ocon, but still, I think there's more to come from this McLaren car, and they need it to come sooner rather than later. A car that does seem to keep delivering sooner, though, is the Alfa Romeo car. They had pretty big changes over the course of this weekend, too. They changed the front wing end plate and the front wing flaps. They changed the front suspension, the engine cover, the floor, the cooling system, the rear suspension, and the rear wing over the course of the Barcelona weekend. But it just didn't seem to affect Valtteri Bottas whatsoever. I know that they had a really, really up and down Barcelona testing. If we think all the way back to that, it seems so long ago when Valtteri Bottas was really struggling to to get to grips with this car and didn't actually have the time to sit in the Alfa Romeo car when it just wasn't working in Barcelona testing. It was Joe that set the fastest time for the team, a 121.885 just two months ago. And now we come back and Valtteri Bottas absolutely killing it, a 119.608. Looks incredibly quick in that car. We just have to look at the Drivers' Championship. He's now one point behind Lando Norris, who has a podium to his name this season. And Bottas is well in and amongst it for those top eight positions, putting Daniel Ricciardo to shame at this moment in time. And Alfa Romeo are only going to get quicker from this position. Their main rivals, though, Alpine, have also brought quite a few upgrades this weekend. They changed their rear wing, their front wing end plate, and their rear brake winglets, with Fernando Alonso setting the fastest time for them in Barcelona, a 121.242 in preseason testing. And Esteban Ocon doing so much better, gaining six tenths of a second on that, a 120.242 six for him this weekend and again the Alpine car just looks quicker and quicker and quicker and especially if Alonso can get to grips with it I know it's his second points finish this season in Spain but I think there's so much more yet to come from Fernando Alonso and Ocon is just killing it one of those masters in the midfield him and Bottas you can basically just put your money on them being in the points every single weekend saying that the team in the midfield that I wouldn't put money on scoring points right now is Alpha Tauri they just seem to be dwindling at this moment in time they've got half the points that Alpine have in the Constructors' Championship right now. And Gasly and Sonoda just sitting in 12th and 13th place. Like, they're well ahead, obviously, of, you know, your Williamses and your Aston Martins. But they're really struggling to find their rhythm this season. And they didn't bring too many upgrades over the course of this weekend either. Just a change to the rear wing, which is a very... Barcelona centric thing to do because of the way that Barcelona is designed being a very technical track you do have to bring that rear wing upgrade and actually if we look at the time comparisons to pre-season to now Pierre Gasly set the fastest time in pre-season a 119.918 whereas Yuki Tsunoda could only do a 120.639 in qualifying this weekend so looks like they're actually losing time they just seem to be dwindling away a lot of the time just not being able to find that consistency Pierre Gasly not quite quite having the race pace. Yuki Tsunoda again showing flashes a little bit more consistently than we saw last year. Yes, but still not to this level that we were expecting from Yuki Tsunoda coming into Formula 1 as such a wonder kid with the Red Bull system. Talking of drivers coming into Formula 1, Kevin Magnussen was the quickest for Haas this weekend in the Barcelona race, but Haas brought absolutely zero upgrades. And I touched on this in my post-race review. If you haven't seen it, link to the description down below. But Haas were... Just a little bit underwhelming again. Looked like they were both going to score points, both into Q3 for the first time since Brazil in 2019. And yet, Kevin Magnussen collided with Lewis Hamilton, dwindled away, and then Mick Schumacher again qualified in 10th place. Looked like points were up for him and then just dropped slowly down the grid over the course of the weekend. But as I said, no upgrades for Haas. And that does concern me a little bit. Although, Nikita Mazepin was the fastest lap time in Barcelona. Remember when he was in a Haas? He set a 121.512 in Barcelona testing, whereas Kevin Magnussen in qualifying this weekend, a 119.682. So they're nearly two seconds quicker than they were in Barcelona testing with Kevin Magnussen at the wheel. And let's be honest, Haas have had a really, really good season in comparison to last year and the year before. So it's going to be baby steps forward for the smallest team in Formula One, but I'm really looking forward to those upgrades when they come in Paul Ricard. On the flip side of that, we had Aston Martin, who made massive changes 
to their car and actually might need some more changes when we do get to Paul Ricard later on in the season because it didn't quite work for Aston Martin. They changed the floor, the side pod design, the bodywork, the cooling system, the rear wing and the halo of their Aston Martin car. The green Red Bull just didn't quite work out over the course of the race weekend. They didn't do too badly in the races, but in terms of the qualifying and their race pace, Sebastian Vettel set a 119.824 in pre-season testing in that Aston Martin. And then this weekend could only manage a 120.954. So it's actually a second slower than they were in pre-season testing, but with huge upgrades, I think that was always going to happen, especially because they're going for a completely different design philosophy to the one they've been running for the first five races. Races. Things are going to take a little while for Aston Martin to adjust to this new design philosophy. Seems a little bit strange that they've gone for such a dramatic change and you know how much that's influenced by Red Bull. We'll kind of have to wait and see and I think they will get quicker. They'll understand this design a little bit better but whether or not is the real push forward that they need to get themselves into the midfield, I'm not so sure. And then rounding out our Barcelona upgrades is, of course, the Williams team at the back of the pack, trying to propel themselves up into that midfield battle as well. They changed quite a few aerodynamic parts on their car this weekend. They changed the front wing flaps, the rear wing and the rear brake winglets as well, but didn't quite have the adjustment I think they were hoping for. Alex Albon's pre-season testing time was 120.318 compared to his best time in qualifying this weekend a 121.645 so didn't really go the way of Williams over the course of this weekend I think it's going to be another struggling season for them at the back Alex Albon picking up points here and there is you know the real victories that they can take from these first six races and hopefully he's able to do that more so over the course of the season but I don't think they're ever really going to impact on the cars in front of them in terms of the constructors championship in my opinion but Maybe, you never know, there's more upgrades to come over the course of the season. And I just love the fact that Formula One now has this open book approach. We see every single team, what upgrades they're bringing and we know exactly what they're doing. And that wasn't the case in Formula One previously. And I'm so glad that they've changed it to that way now. But that is every single upgrade that every single team has brought. Who do you think did the best upgrades over the course of the Barcelona Grand Prix? And do you think we'll see more upgrades over the course of this European stint? Which team needs the most upgrades? in your opinion let me know in the comments down below whilst you're there leave a like subscribe if you are new to the channel and i'll see you next time